very good evening at Swatini and welcome to the 8 p.m. news broadcast brought to you by Swatini TV. My name is Nondo Bego Nzabgelago. Let's take a look at tonight's headlines. Her Royal Highness Princess Putlebetive thanks Their Majesties and Nkosigati for encouraging her to assist the needy. The Prime Minister says the nation working together with development partners in the country can eliminate malaria. The Church of the Nazarene has donated food and utensils to a Swatini hospice at home. The News her Royal Highness Princess Butlebetive has appreciated Their Majesties and Nkosigati for encouraging her to assist the needy. Her Royal Highness was speaking at Mfanyana Hall in Manzini when donating food parcels that will benefit orphaned and vulnerable children. Her Royal Highness Princess Butlebetive, as the patron of Sihlalo Semosa Foundation, donated food parcels to benefit orphaned and vulnerable children. Her Royal Highness was accompanied by Her Royal Highness Princess Sibatle and Princess Nigudumo. The organization was established to take care of children who are in need and also those who take care of these children. Addressing the gathering, Her Royal Highness Princess Butlebetive thanked their majesties and Inkosigati for the encouragement they gave to her to take care of the needy. Her Royal Highness also encouraged the nation not to forget those who are in need, even during these trying times whereby the world is faced with the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> Mbonga Ingoyama in Love Gazi Ningoskat Gusi Kutsat Guti Sibo Sitarabasel Narabat Singal Sitolet Ingitiet Sisalasemusa Foundation Guti Masibona Sitting or Evan Sitona Gogon Kelesinag Guti Sifezig Petalet See a need, fulfill a need covid Speaking on behalf of the Mantini Regional Administrator, Gunad Lamini thanked the Princess for the kind gesture and also pointed out that they will continue praying for her so that God blesses her abundantly. <laughs> The food parcels donated by Her Royal Highness will benefit about 250 children from four national care points and one non-profit organization. On the news, I'm Polile Mazia with Tabiso Lamini in Manzini. The Prime Minister, Ambrose Lamini, says together as a Maswati and through partnership and technical assistance, Eswatini can eliminate malaria. The Prime Minister was speaking during the launch of the End Malaria Strategic Plan for the years 2021 to 2023 in Mbabane. Malaria fever still remains a challenge and one of the killer diseases in many countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Eswatini has made a remarkable progress as one of the leading countries in the region in the fight against malaria, with government putting an extra effort. The Prime Minister Ambrose Lamini launched the 2021 to 2023 strategic plan and also launched the malaria offices at Sibegelo House in Babane. The Prime Minister thanked their Majesties for an esteemed leadership, which has encouraged government to be exemplary to other governments that malaria can be conquered through partnerships. 
Eliminating malaria will be made possible through sustainable partnerships and through the support of all sectors of society. As a low malaria transmission country, we are among the four Southern African states identified by the African Union and the Southern African Development Community to eliminate malaria. The reality on the ground is that as a region and a continent, we have the capacity to end malaria with well-coordinated interventions. This we can achieve by, among others, investing in human development and capacity building, improving capacity for disease management and strengthening capacities for containment and prevention of epidemics. WHO's acting country representative, Dr. Brian Chirombo, who spoke technologically, uploaded a SWAT in for the remarkable progress in fighting malaria. All three are important and need to be done. I would therefore like to urge us all, as we continue the fight against COVID-19, that we ensure that we stay focused on the national goal to eliminate malaria in S14 by 2023. Government has not lost focus in diseases like malaria amid COVID-19. Amongst other things, the country aims at strengthening diagnostics in fighting malaria. The strategic plan's slogan is, it begins with you, it begins with me. And its vision is a malaria-free Eswatini. Eswatini National Provident Fund's Chepesin Mashumishongwe presented a check of 100,000 Malangani towards the malaria fight campaign. For Eswatini TV News, I'm Kian MCB with Muslim Konda in Babane. The Women Ministry and the Nazarene Mission International Local Office of the Church of the Nazarene has donated food parcels and house utensils to a Swatini hospice at home. The donation was received by Busin Lela on behalf of Ngosiga Adim Magen Gangaza at the organization's offices in Matapa. The Women Ministry and the Nazarene Mission International Local Office of the Church of the Nazarene Central District presented food parcels and house utensils to Hospice at Home. The Hospice at Home organization, whose patron is Inko Sigati, was initiated for people who are very ill, especially those who need palliative care. As the organization gives out aid services on a daily basis, nurses normally notice or see a huge need to assist with food for most patients. The church donated food parcels and house utensils worth 20,000 in Malangani. Receiving the donation on behalf of Inkosigati, Bosin Lela said Inkosigati Mage Ngangaza really appreciate what the church has done for the organization. <laughs> Nasanigate <laughs> Handing over the donation, Reverend Mkatra said, As a church, they strongly believe in helping those who are vulnerable and they understand the need for this non-profit organization as it will sometimes face difficulties while giving out services to the people. As uh, the church, we appreciate the significant role played uh, by a certain hospice at home in the provision of a comforting, reassuring and pain-relieving care beyond cure to the host 
of Emaswati faced with countless challenges associated with the life-threatening ailments. It is against this background, Chair, that uh, we are here today representing members of the Church of the Nazarene in this district to present a donation to a certain hospice at home at the value of 20,000, which we believe it will go a long way as you offer your care and support to our people. A Swatin Hospice at Home Director Zotwa Kamete revealed that COVID-19 has brought up new challenges for the organization and further pointed out that they've seen an increase in the number of people coming for their services. On the news, I'm Polile Mazia in Matapa. The Ministry of Education and Training has started an inclusive program within which primary school head teachers are involved in educational strategies to be used once schools reopen. This was said by the Minister for Education and Training, Lady Howard Mabuza, during a meeting with primary school principals in the Shiseleni region. The Minister for Education and Training, Honorable Lady Howard Mabuza, says this program is part of the Ministry's means to mitigate the immediate impact that the virus has on the educational system. She says it is therefore important to include head teachers as they facilitate the continuity for Grade 7 lessons. As we are preparing to, to take on Standard 5, uh, we thought maybe we should have this consultation meeting with the uh, principals in primary schools so that they can have a say as to how we can get the schools ready and maybe also answer their concerns as we prepare to, to get back to school. Speaking on behalf of the Shiseloni Region Primary School Head Teachers, Zandile Lamini, who heads Jopa Primary School, thanks the Ministry of Education and Training for including them in the decision-making process of the reopening of Grade 7s. We are so grateful about what the Minister of Education is doing to open schools, especially grade 7, because it affects learners, parents, we teachers, and the community at large is so worried about the, the learners. So we are so happy because the ministry is promising us that it will provide the necessary things that we need for the learners to be safe at school. We are so happy about that. And micro project is a promising big things that they will help us. So we are looking forward to the ministry that they will provide the necessary things that we need to open the schools, especially Great Seven. The Ministry of Education and Training is showing continued effort in capacitating educational professionals with ways to curb the spread of COVID-19. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, Sifiso Ngumalo, Smuva Shongwe, Tlangano. The Minister of Natural Resources and Energy, Peter Bembe, has encouraged the youth to take a lead in development projects in their communities. The minister noted with concern that most members of the water scheme and Nzingani constituency are old people and there is no youth. This was during the minister's visit to Nzingani constituency. Youth involvement in community development projects is still a challenge in most communities in the country, according to the Minister of Natural Resources and Energy, Peter Pembe, when visiting different water schemes and dancing in a constituency. The youth should be leading development projects in their communities because they still have energy to work. <laughs> Lanzani Chief Ndalusa Zandwando says the youth will play a significant role in community developments if they were motivated. During the 2020 Youth Day celebration on Wednesday, it was stated that the youth play a significant role at national as well as in global developments. The youth said what motivates them to participate in development projects is to be given resources, faith and be listened. Reporting for Eswatini TV News is Pumapim Sweli Nzingeni.
We will now take a look at the COVID-19 update from the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Health has reported 74 confirmed COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours, according to a statement issued by the Minister for Health, Li Zingosi. A total of 543 results were received, out of which 74 tested positive for coronavirus, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the kingdom to 3,599. The ministry has also reported two more deaths, bringing the total number of COVID-19 COVID-19 fatalities in the country to 65. The statement shows that there are 1,469 cases, 1,991 have recovered, 65 have died and 74 have been registered for care. The deceased are a 67-year-old man and a 44-year-old who are both from the Hoho region. Looking at the cumulative confirmed COVID-19 cases, by region, Manzini has 1,624 cases, the whole region has 1,453 cases, the Shiselweni region has 272 cases, and Lubombo has 250 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Let's continue with the news. The National Resource Mobilization Committee Chairperson Dr. Philip Nisi has encouraged companies to play their part in contributing towards the fight against COVID-19. Nisi was speaking when receiving equipment worth 278,000 Malangeni donated by three companies at the Happy Valley Hotel in Ezulwini. Companies in the kingdom continue to contribute towards assisting the country in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. This was evident when three companies donated to the Resource Mobilization Committee. These are Maloma Colliery Mine, which donated 181,000 Malangeni worth of equipment, which includes seven beds for Sitegi Referral Hospital, one borehole to benefit Ndutogazi community. Sapumula Savings and Credit Cooperative donated food worth 10,000 Malangeni. Similia Lamini Mwape donated surgical mask worth more than 87,000 Malangeni, which she and her husband got from Keda Zambia Ceramic Partners. The Resource Mobilization Committee's chairperson, Dr. Felmni, says the donations will go a long way. Letting for Letty, Gabegunene, Axigo Gutsi, Imali, Leletwe, National Resource Mobilization Committee. Go to a Yvelu Yaletin for Letty Tsengiwe, Letty Town Lulselwa, National Disaster Management Agency, Besege in Sangano, Gupunga, Teslagano, Eveni, Sevele, Yawen Lulisa Lulsito, Esiveni, Si Vimbe, Nam Kushane, Lesi Ubonago. Siakela, si National Resource Mobilization Committee, a good live, a imimang, in Sangan, and in Gambani, si Kubege Vele, si Segela, and si Poseliches Viva Neni, Gulu and Alum Kutlan. Smile Lamini Moape, who spoke on behalf of the companies, says that they believe the contribution will make a huge difference in the fight against the pandemic. We hope this will help in a small way to protect our people from this fatal vi virus. Our hope would be to see some of these masks being distributed to school children so they can resume their respective curricula. Further, we wish to encourage other citizens, more especially the youth, to continue contributing to this cause because we too have a role to play. The National Disaster Management Agency's Chief Executive Officer, Russell Lamini, stated that all the items donated will be presented to the Ministry of Health. For Iswatini TV, Sondom Langeni with Fabrice Musonera in Ezulwini. The House of Assembly is expected to resume its business on Friday, the 14th of August, 2020, starting at 10 a.m. Members are expected to attend the important sitting without fail and to keep time. According to the order paper of the day, there will be bills that will be tabled and the House is expected to debate the Supplementary Appropriation Bill Number 3 of 2020.
Let's continue with the next story. The United Nations Children Fund, together with the Environmental Health Department and World Vision, continue with their program of ensuring that communities in the Kingdom of Eswatini are open, are defecation-free, and also have hand-washing facilities by the year 2023. The United Nations Children's Fund, working hand in hand with the Environmental Health Department and World Vision, still continue with their initiative whereby they assist and train Maswati in constructing toilets and hand washing facilities in communities in the country. Boniswa Jaja, who is part of the program, says the program has been going well so far and that they hope to reach out to everyone in need of facilities, especially communities in the rural areas. Well, the program that we are talking about today follows an initiative by government to establish a sanitation and hygiene policy as well as a sanitation and hygiene strategy and an open defecation protocol, which we is guiding the sector uh, towards implementing projects and activities that will lead to Eswatini becoming an open defecation free country. We're targeting six uh, chief domes in, in five constituencies within our country. The reason why we are picking them is that we are hoping that at the end of the project they, be, they will become trailblazers to other communities to sensitize them on the importance of being open defecation free and on the importance of building their own toilets. The program goes in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number six, which states that there should be clean water and sanitation in all countries and regulations provided by the Ministry of Health that everyone should practice good hygiene, especially during this period of the COVID-19 disease. For Swatiri TV News, I'm Temalangen Lamini with Muslim Konda in Babane. The health promotion officer in the Ministry of Health, Voivoi Nzinisa, encourages Emaswati to properly wear their face mask and minimize the spread of COVID-19. She says it is everyone's right to correct the next person if they have not worn their mask properly. This week from the 7th to the 14th of August, it is the World Mask Week, which is aimed at encouraging governments to enforce mask wearing in public to minimize the spread of COVID-19. It has been observed that most people do not properly put on their masks. The Action Week aims at highlighting what governments, businesses and individuals should do in mask wearing during this week. This includes governments making it mandatory to wear masks in public. Businesses should coordinate with local public health authorities. So, Voivo in Zinisa, the health promotion officer in the Minister of Health, emphasizes on the proper wearing of masks. She says masks should not be touched and removed anyhow, but it is preferable that they be grabbed by the ears whenever there's a need to remove it. She says a policy which makes it obligatory to wear masks in public and proper wearing of masks. She says everyone has a right to correct the next person if not properly worn. I am Kian MC with Muslim Konda for his watching TV news in Babane. Let's take a look at our sports news. A Swatini Cycling Tournament Association president, Slangun Labati, says the association is faced with financial challenges caused by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, where they cannot have a lot of their competitions before the end of the year. Labati says, as a result, the association will only afford to host the Sitegi race in November. Labati was speaking to a Swatini TV sports in Babane. The Eswatin Cycling Association was amongst the sporting codes that was given a green light by government to proceed with the activities as they have less chances of spreading the coronavirus pandemic. According to the association's president, Siflam Labatsi, currently the association is faced with financial challenges and cannot afford to host many competitions as usual, but there is a promise to cyclists that the Sitegi race will go on as expected. We were supposed to have uh, in April the national championship. Obviously, we had resources to host that event, 
we are hoping to channel those resources to the CTEC event uh, just to ensure that there, there is at least a competition in, 20, in 2020. We are aware that cyclists prepare for competitions, they need to prepare, so there will be expectations to, have, uh, to be rewarded according to, the, to their, to their winning, winning categories. So we will be ensuring that we try a bit to try and and downgrade our competition. Uh, maybe one will say if we we offering t-shirts on entry at entry points, maybe we won't offer those. But we'll just ensure that the critical elements like the timings, uh, the the marshalling, the water points are are are, are, are there and observed. Uh. Clavazzi concluded urging different cyclists from different clubs to keep on training regularly to maintain their standard. First watching TV Sports for Pisom Sonera. Bye-bye. We've come to the end of our news bulletin, but before we wrap up, let's take a quick recap of the headlines. Her Royal Highness Princess Butlebe Diva thanks Their Majesties and Nkosigati for encouraging her to assist the needy. The Prime Minister says the nation working together with development partners in the country can eliminate malaria. The Church of the Nazarene has donated food and utensils to a Swatini hospice at home. Eswatini, that is all the news we had for you tonight. Up next is the weather forecast. Good night and God bless.